Well, I'm Bowser Bowman, Mr. Dan Tamarine Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, December 30th, 2020, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Answer Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com, or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Universal Pictures and DreamWorks Animation are delaying the release of the Boss Baby sequel. Variety confirmed on Monday that the Boss Baby's family business release will move from March 26th to September 17th, 2021. That line said the move unseats the DreamWorks animation film The Bad Guys, which was set for release on September 17th. The movie will now open in 2022. News of the shift comes amid ongoing concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic. Only 60% of theater screens are in operation in the United States and Canada, and the key Los Angeles and New York City markets remain closed. The Boss Baby Family Business is a sequel to the 2017 animated film The Boss Baby, which is based on Marla Frazee's picture book of the same name. Both movies are directed by Tom McGrath. Family Business features the voices of Alec Baldwin, James Marsden, and Amy Sedaris. Universal Pictures released a trailer for the film in November that shows Tim and Ted taking on Dr. Edward Armstrong, played by Jeff Goldblum, an evil genius. The Bad Guys is based on the Aaron Bilaby book of the same name. The animated film is directed by Pierre Perfil and features the voices of Sam Rockwell, Aquafina, Craig Robinson, and Mark Maron. Baldwin spoke out Sunday on Instagram after his wife Hilaria Baldwin's Spanish heritage was questioned. The actor slammed ridiculous and false reports. The CW is giving a glimpse of the new series Superman and Lois. The network shared a trailer for the superhero drama Tuesday featuring Tyler Hodgson as Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman, and Elizabeth Tolich as Lois Lane. The preview title Family Crest gives a look at Superman's um, new suit and the couple's new home in Smallville. Superman and Lois are now parents to son Jonathan, played by Jordan Alessis, and, and Jonathan, played by Alex Garfin, and are ready to fight for their family. A uh, person says in the voiceover, we all began as one version of ourselves, but as we go, life changes us, every moment shaping our character, shifting our priorities, stretching every fiber of our being until we think we've lost ourselves to the stress of all. But that's not true because under the torn fibers is a strong person forged by steel with the courage to fight for those we love. And what we thought was lost can be found in family. Superman and Lois is based on the DC Comics characters and is set in the Arrowverse universe. The series is developed by Todd Helbing and Greg Berlanti and co-stars Dylan Walsh, Emmanuel Chiriki, and Wilk Parts. The CW shared a teaser trailer and photo for this month depicting Hodgson in Superman New Suit. Superman and Lois will premiere February 23rd on the CW. Bridgerton creator Chris Van, Hilsen, uh, Van Dusen is celebrating the show's sense of escapism. Van Dusen and author Julia Quinn, who wrote the Bridgerton novel, discussed the Netflix series during Tuesday's episode of Good Morning America. Bridgerton is a period piece set in Regency-era London. Season 1 is largely based on the first novel, The Duke and I, which centers on the romance between Daphne Bridgerton, played by Phoebe Denever, and uh, Simon, the Duke of Hastings, played by Reg Jean Page. On GMA, Van Dusen says the show recreated the sense of escapism he felt after first reading Quinn's novels on producer Shonda Rhimes' behest. Van Dusen said, The night after Shonda told me about these books, I took them home and I just, I just devoured them. I re really became obsessed with them. They had every element I always loved. He added, well, on top of everything, it was about escapism for me. Escapism was exactly what I was looking for. And I think it's what a lot of people are looking for today. Van Dusen also addressed how Bridgerton featured a diverse cast. He said, we wanted modern audiences to relate to it and to see themselves on screen no matter who they were. In addition, Van Dusen said Bridgerton provides modern commentary about sexism and other social issues in society. He says, I wanted there to be this running modern commentary about how in the last 200 years everything has changed, but nothing has changed. And I think that's true for both women and men. 
Bridgerton premiered last Friday on Netflix. The series co-stars Jonathan Bailey, Claudia Jesse, Nicola uh, Coughlin, Doja Andoa, and Golda Rochevia. Crazy Rich Asian star Constant Wu is a new mom. Wu's manager Larry Taub confirmed Monday to USA Today that Wu welcomed her first child, daughter, with her boyfriend, musician Ryan Katner, over the summer. E! News reported the birth Monday afternoon. A source said Wu and Katner, they're doing great and they're so ex- excited and happy. Wu attended the Queer Tees Awards reception in February, but has kept out of the public eye during the COVID-19 pandemic. The private actress has her Instagram and Twitter account labeled as defunct. Wu played Jessica Hahn on the ABC series Fresh Off the Boat, which ended in February after six seasons. She portrayed uh, hand, uh, Rachel Chu in the uh, Crazy Rich Asians and reprised the role in a sequel. Henry Golding told Digital Spy in September that production of the Crazy Rich Asians sequel has been delayed. The actor said they are working to adapt the Kevin Kwan novel that the films are based on. Golding says they've got the, uh, the two books that Kevin Kwan wrote still to come, and they're trying to find an angle to convert those from page to script to film. He added, it's a very complicated process because visually, sometimes the novel doesn't make as much sense as it would on the screen in an adaptation directly. So you have to really change it up to make it interesting. Katner performs in the rock band Man Man under the name Honus Honus. Real Housewives of Dallas star DeAndre Simmons is hospitalized with COVID-19. E! News reported Monday that Simmons is hospitalized in Dallas after testing positive for COVID-19. People confirmed the news of Simmons' hospitalization. Simmons rep Kelly Brady said DeAndre Simmons has tested positive for COVID-19, has been admitted to the COVID ward at UT Southwestern Hospital in Texas. Her oxygen levels were borderline, and she will start uh, redmizivir. At this time, we ask you to respect her, her and her family's privacy and to send your prayers for a speedy recovery. Podcast host Kate, um, Kate Casey said in a tweet Monday that Simmons was struggling. Casey said, just heard from DeAndre, and she's asking for your prayers. She's in the hospital and struggling. Hashtag Real Housewives of Dallas at Bravo TV. Uh, Jennifer Davis, a friend of the Real Housewives of Dallas Housewives, showed her support for Simmons on Instagram stories. Uh, Davis wrote, Please pray for uh, DeAndre Simmons. She has COVID, is in ICU on oxygen. Simmons recently had ankle replacement surgery but was at home and recovering as of the holidays. She shared a family photo Saturday that showed her bandaged leg. Simmons captioned the post, This year I'm extra thankful for my family, friends, and the two new fur babies to join the Simmons Lock household. Real Housewives of Dallas co-stars uh, Stephanie Hallman, Brandy Redman, Cameron Westcott, uh, Carrie Brittenham, and Tiffany Moon. The series will return for a fifth season on January 5th on Bravo. Soleil Moon Fry and her husband Jason Goldberg have separated after 22 years of marriage. E! Entertainment uh, confirmed Monday that Fry and Goldberg split earlier this year. People reported the news Monday afternoon. Fry's rep says Soleil Moon Fry and Jason Goldberg quietly separated this year. The priority will continue to be their four beautiful children as they move forward with love and compassion. Fry and Goldberg married in October 1998 and have four children, daughters Poet Sienna, 15, and Jagger Joseph, 12, and sons Lyrics, Sunny, 6, and Story, 4. Fry shared a photo with her kids Saturday on Instagram. Star captioned the post, Happy, happy day after Christmas to all. Sending everyone so much love. So grateful to be safe and cuddled up with these loves. She added, as my girls and I to say along with my lifelong friend forever at Jenny Diane Lewis, it's one closer to Christmas. Hope you are well. This room may represent some feelings for 2020. Frey came to fame as a child as a title character in the NBC series Punky Brewster. She reprised the role in the Punky Brewster series sequel series for Peacock that finished filming its first season this month. Fry shared uh, photos from, uh, from set on Instagram after wrapping season one. And Vogue and singer rapper Sweetie have joined the lineup of Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve. ABC announced Monday on Twitter that Envogue and Swati 
uh, will perform during the TV special Thursday. In the company video, En Vogue members Terry Ellis, Cindy Heron, and Rhonda Bennett share their hopes for 2021. Bennett says, for everybody to stay healthy and for us to find some, some, some balance of normalcy amongst the nations, among the world, that brings us more joy and a feeling of security in the years going forward. In other videos, uh, Sway T said she is most excited about the release of her debut studio album in 2021. They are joined previously by announced performers Jennifer Lopez, Miley Cyrus, Megan Thee Stallion, Doja Cat, Maluma, Ella Mai, and others. On Tuesday, Lopez said she will be performing her new song in the morning for the first time. Ryan Seacrest, Lizzie Hale, Billy Porter will be hosting the New York Celebration Times Square with Sierra hosting the Los Angeles Party and Big Frida to host the New Orleans Bash. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve will begin airing Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC. Other New Year's Eve specials include NBC's New Year's Eve featuring Gwen Stefani and, and Kylie Minogue and a performance by Gloria Gaynor. Pierre Cardin, the global fashion icon who expanded his empire through international branding and merchandising, has died. He was 98. The French Academy of Fine Arts announced Cardin's death. Cardin got his star working under fashion stars like Jean Coteau and Christian Dior before creating his own brand with signature futuristic designs. Along with dressing the rich and famous, Cardin became a household name by branding to the masses, attaching his name to products like clothes, bathrooms, items, fragrances, vehicles, and even aviator jumpsuits. Ciro Bathalio, the general secretary of the French Academy of Fine Arts, tweeted, immense sadness, equally joy of having known him. Cardin was credited with expanding the fashion world beyond its traditional French epicenter by taking designs to shows in Tokyo, Beijing, and Moscow in the 50s. His suits became a favorite with the Beatles a decade later, and the, ad the adoption helped spread his popularity to a younger audience. Cardin also went on to design uniforms for Pakistan International Airlines, clothings for nurses, and NASA commissioned him to create an inter interpretation of a spacesuit in 1969. Cardin told the New York Times in 1987, I was born an artist, but I'm a businessman. Born in Italy in 1922, Cardin's family moved to France, and he became a tailor at the age of 14. He later grew his talents during an apprenticeship. Cardin got his break in 1945 when he was hired as an assistant in Paris' House of Pequon, which led to a start in designing costumes for the 1946 film Beauty and the Beast. Cardin was 98. As we say goodbye to 2020, we look back at some of the most notable figures that we lost during 2020. Uh, giants from not only the entertainment world, but also the sports world, music, television, and movies, and beyond. Although they're gone, their legacy still remains. Let's look back at some of the notable figures we lost in 2020. As a shooting guard for 20 years with the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant was regarded as one of the greatest players of all time. He won five NBA championships and 18, was an 18-time All-Star, 15-time member of the All-NBA team, a 12-time member of the All-Defense team, was named 2008's NBA Most Valuable Player and a two-time NBA Finals Most Valuable Player. Brian also led the NBA in scoring and ranked fourth on the league's all-time regular scoring list and all-time postseason scoring list. Nicknamed the Black Mamba in the mid-2000s and the epithet became widely adapted by the general public. He, was also, he also won two gold medals in the 2008 and 2012 Summer Olympics and in 2018 he won the Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film for his 2017 film Dear Basketball. Brian died at the age of 41, along with his 13-year-old daughter Gianna and seven others in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. A number of tributes and memorials were subsequently issued, including renaming the All-Star Game MVP Award in his honor. Kurt Douglas became an international star through positive reception for his leading role as an unscrupulous boxing hero and champion, which brought him his first nomination as the Academy Award for Best Actor. His other early films included Young Man with the Horn, playing opposite Lauren Bacall and Doris Day, Ace in the Hole opposite Jan Sterling, and Detective Story, for which he received a Golden Globe nomination as Best Actor in a Drama in 1951. He received his second Oscar nomination 
in, for his dramatic role in The Bad and the Beautiful in 1952 opposite Lana Turner, and his third for portraying Vincent Van Gogh in Lust for Life in 1956, which also landed him a second Golden Globe nomination. He also established Brenna Productions, which began producing films as varied as Pass of Glory in 1957 and Spartacus in 1960. In those two films, he collaborated with then the relatively unknown director Stanley Kubrick, taking Lee Rose in both films. Douglas has been praised for helping to break the Hollywood blacklist by having Dalton Trumbull write Spartacus with an official on-screen credit. He produced and starred in Lonely Are the Brave in 1962, considered a classic, and Seven Days in May in 1964, opposite Burt Lancaster. In 1963, he starred in the Broadway play One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a story that he purchased and later gave to his son Michael Douglas, who turned it into an Oscar-winning film. As an actor and philanthropist, Douglas received three Academy Award nominations, an Academy Honorary Award for Lifetime Achievement, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. American Film Institute's uh, list of the greatest male screen legends of classic Hollywood cinema, he ranks number 17. And he was the highest ranking living person on the list until his death at the age of 103. Olivia de Havilland appeared in 49 films and one is, was one of the leading actresses of her time. And she was the last major uh, surviving star of the golden age of Hollywood cinema and the oldest living uh, and earliest surviving Academy Award winner until her death in July 2020. The Havilland first came to prominence with Errol Flynn as a screen couple in adventures films such as Captain Blood in 1935 and The Adventures of Robin Hood in 1938. But one of her best known roles is that of Melanie Hamilton in Gone with the Wind, for which he, she received her first of five Oscar nominations, the only one for Best Supporting Actress. The Havilland also appeared in such movies as Hold Back the Dawn in 1941, Teach His Own 1946, and The Snake Pit 1948, and The Heiress 1949, receiving nominations for Best Actress for each, and winning for To Each His Own and The Heiress. The Havilland lived in Paris from the 1950s and received honors uh, as the National Medal of Arts, the Legion of Honor, and the appointment to the Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Rhonda Fleming was an actress in, tele in both film and television. She acted in more than 40 films, mostly in the 40s and 50s, and became renowned as one of the most glamorous actresses of her day, nicknamed the Queen of Technicolor because she was photographed so well in that medium. Max von Zido had a seven-year career in European and American cinema, television, and theaters, appearing in more than 150 films and several television series in multiple languages. Vencido was best known for portraying 14th century knight Antonius Block in Ingmar Bergman's The Seventh Seal, 1957, which featured iconic scenes of his character challenging death to a game of chess. He appeared in a total of 11 films directed by Bergman, among which were The Virgin Spring in 1960 and Through the Glass Darkly in 1961, both winners of the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Vencido made his American debut as Jesus Christ in The Greatest Story Ever Told in 1965 and went on to star in films such as The Exorcist, 1973, Flash Gordon, 1980, Dune, 1984, Minority Report, 2002, Shutter Island, 2010, Robin Hood, 2010, and Star Wars The Force Awakens, 2015. He also had a supporting role in HBO's Game of Thrones as the Three-Eyed Raven, for which he received a Primetime Emmy Award nomination. Sean Connery gained recognition as the first actor to portray fictional British secret agent James Bond in films starring in seven Bond films between 1962 and 1983. Originally the role of Dr. No, Connery played Bond in six of Eon's picture, uh, productions entries and made his final appearance in the Jack Schwartzman produced Never Say Never Again. Although he did not enjoy the off-screen attention the role gave him, the success brought offers from famed film directors such as Alfred Hitchcock, Sling the Met, and John Huston. Those films include Marnie, 1964, The Hill, 1965, Murder on the Orient Express, 1974, The Men Who Would Be King, 1975, A Bridge Too Far, 1977, Highlander, 1986, The Name of the Rose, 1986, The Untouchables, 1987, for which he won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, 1989, Hunt for Red October 1990, Dragonheart 1996, 
The Rock 1996, and Finding Forrester 2000. And Sean, Sean Connery officially retired from acting in 2006, although he briefly returned to the voiceovers in 2012. His co-star in Goldfinger, Honor Blackman, was an English actress widely known first for her roles as Kathy Gale in The Avengers, but she's best remembered for playing the role of Pussy Galore in Goldfinger. During the 60s, Blackman practiced judo in the uh, Baduke Dojo. This helped her prepare for her role as Kathy Gale in The Avengers and, of course, Pussy Galore in Goldfinger in 1964. Abel R. Broccoli said Blackman was cast opposite Sean Connery in the James Bond film on the basis of her success in the British television show The Avengers. He knew more. The, audience, the American audiences would not have seen the program. Broccoli said the Brits would love her because they knew her as Mrs. Gale. The Yanks would love her because she was so good and it was a perfect combination. Diana Rigg was also a star of The Avengers as Emma Peel. She, she won an Emmy, Tony, and a BAFTA award um, on screen and on stage. And she also portrayed Countess Teresa de Vincentio, the wife of James Bond, in the movie On Her Majesty's Ser Secret Service in 1969. But she's best known for this generation as Elania Tyrell in Game of Thrones from 2013 to 2017, and in her celebrated performance as Medea on Broadway and in the UK. Chadwick Boseman uh, was an American actor and playwright. He became prominent in theater, winning a Drama League di Directing Fellowship and an acting Edioko and being nominated for a Jeff Award as a playwright for Deepa Azure. Transitioning to the screen, he landed his first major role as a series regular on Persons Unknown in 2010. But his breakthrough performance came in 2013 as baseball player Jackie Robinson in the biographical film 42. He continued to portray historical figures starring uh, in Get On Up in 2014 as singer James Brown and Marshall in 2017 as Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall. Bozeman achieved international fame for portraying superhero Black Panther in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from 2016 to 2019. He appeared in four films, including an eponymous 2018 film, which earned him an NAACP uh, Image Award for Outstanding Actor in a Motion Picture, the Screen Actor Skills Award for Outstanding Performance by a Cast in a Motion Picture. 2016, Bo Bozeman was diagnosed with colon cancer. He kept his condition private, continued to act until his death from the complications related to the illness in August 2020. His final film, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, was released posthumously the same year to critical acclaim. Buck Henry was an American actor and screenwriter and director. Henry's contributions to the film include his work as a co-director on Heaven Can Wait alongside Warren Beatty, and his work as a co-writer for Mike Nichols' The Graduate in 1967, and Peter Bogdanovich in What's Up Doc. On television, he co-created Get Smart uh, with Mel Brooks and hosted Saturday Night Live ten times from 1976 to 1980. Terry Jones was the Welsh actor, writer, comedian, screenwriter, film director, historian, and a member of Monty Python's team. Along with uh, partner Michael Palin, they wrote and performed for several high-profile British comedy programs, including Do Not Adjust Your Set and The Frost Report, before creating Monty Python's Flying Circus with Cambridge graduates, Grant Chapman, John Cleese, Eric Idle, and the American animator and filmmaker Terry Gilliam. James Lipton was the American writer, lyricist, actor, and Dean Emmerts of the Actors Studio Drama School at Pace University in New York City. He was the executive producer, writer, and host of the Bravo cable television series Inside the Actors Studio, which debuted in 1994. He retired from the show in 2018. Terrence McNally was an American playwright, liberist, and screenwriter. Described as the bard of American theater and one of the greatest contemporary playwrights the theater world has yet produced, McNally was inducted into the American Theater Hall of Fame in 1996. He received the Tony Award for Best Play for Love, Valor, Compassion, and Master Class, as well as the Tony Award for Best Book of a Musical for Kisses of a Spider Woman and Ragtime. His other accolades include an Emmy, two Guggenheim Fellowships, a Rockefeller Grant, four Drama Desk Awards, and two Opies. His career spanned six decades 
and his plays, musicals, and operas were routinely performed all over the world. Shirley Knight was nominated twice for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for The Dark at the Top of the Stairs in 1960 and Sweet, Birth, uh, Sweet Bird of Youth in 1962. In the 60s, she had leading roles in a number of Hollywood films, such as The Crouch, 1962, The House of Women, 1962, The Group, 1966, The Counterfeit Killer, 1968, and The Rain People, 1969. She also won a Tony for Best Performance Actress in the Play for a performance in Kennedy's Children, played by Robert Patrick. And her other, in later years, her supporting roles included many films, including Endless Love, 1981, As Good As It Gets, 1997, Divine Secrets of the Yaga Sisterhood, 2002, and Grandma's Boy in 2006. Ifran Khan was an Indian actor who worked in Hindi cinema as well as British Jerry Stiller was part of the comedy team Stiller and Mira to whom he was married over 60 years until her death in 2015. Stiller saw a later career resurgence, starring in 1993, playing George Constanza's father Frank on the sitcom Seinfeld, part for which he earned an Emmy nomination. That year, Seinfeld went off the air. Stiller began his role as the eccentric Arthur Spooner on the CBS comedy series The King of Queens, another role which garnered him widespread acclaim. A father of actor Ben Stiller, the father and son appeared together in films such as Zoolander, Heavyweights, Hot Pursuits, The Heartbreak Kid, and Zoolander. He also provided voice work for f television and films such as The Lion King, One and a Half, and Planes, Fire and Rescue. Fred Willard was an American actor and comedian and writer. He was best known for his roles in the Rob Reiner mockumentary film This is Spinal Tap, the Christopher Guest mockumentaries Way for the Guffman, Best Show, Best in Show, A Mighty Win, For Your Consideration, and Mascots, and the Anchorman films. Sir Ian Holm received the 1967 Tony Award for Best Featured Actor for his performance as Lenny in The Homecoming 19, and the 1998 Laurence Olivier Award for Best Actor for his performance in the title role of King Lear. But he won a 1981 BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Supporting Role and the Cannes Film Festival Award for Best Actor for his role as athletics trainer Sam Mizzabini in Chariots of Fire, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award. His other well-known film roles include Ash and Alien, Father Vito Cornelius in The Fifth Element, Chief Skinner in Ratatouille, and Billy O. Baggins in Lord of the Rings in the Hobbit film series. <coughs> His co-star in Chariots of Fire was Ben Cross. He played the British Olympic athlete Carol Abertson and the fictional Ambassador Sharik in the 2009 film Star Trek. Kelly Preston appeared in more than 60 television and film productions, including Mischief in 1985, Twins 1988, Jerry Maguire 1996, and For the Love of the Game 1999. She was married to John Travolta, whom she collaborated on the comedy film The Experts 1989 and the biographical film Gotti in 2018. Alan Parker was an English filmmaker known for directing musicals, including Bugsby Malone 1976, Fame 1980, Pink Floyd, The Wall, 1982, The Commitments, 1991, and Evita, 1996. Also, he directed true story dramas including Midnight Express, 1978, Mississippi Birdie, 1988, uh, Come See the Paradise, 1990, and Angel's Ashes, 1998, and family dramas such as Shoot the Moon, 1982, and the horror and thrillers including Angel Heart, 1987, and The Life of David Gale, 2003. Jeremy Bullock was an English actor, uh, a career that spanned more than six decades before he gained recognition as originating the physical portrayal of Boba Fett in the Star Wars franchise, appearing as the character in the films The Empire Strikes Back, 1980, and The Return of the Jedi in 1983. He returned to the franchise in a different role for 2005's Revenge of the Sith. David Prowse was the English bodybuilder, weightlifter, and career actor in British film and television. He, portrayed, he physically portrayed Darth Vader in the original Star Wars trilogy and a manservant in Stanley Kubrick's 1971 film A Clockwork Orange. Ennio Marconi 
was the Italian composer, orchestra, conductor, and trumpeter player who wrote music in a wide range of styles. More than 400 scores of cinema and television, as well as more than 100 classic works, Marconi is widely considered as one of the most prolific and greatest film composers of all time. His score to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is regarded as one of the most recognizable and influential soundtracks in history. Joel Schumacher received little attention for his initial theatrical release films, The Incredible Shrinking Women in DC Cab, before rising to prominence after directing St. Elmer's Fire and The Lost Boys. Schumacher was selected to replace Tim Burton as the director of the Batman film franchise and oversaw Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Carl Reiner was an American actor, comedian, director, screenwriter, and author. His career spanned seven decades. During the early years of television comedy from 1950 to 1957, he acted on and contributed sketch material for your show of shows and Caesar's Hour, starring Sid Caesar, writing alongside Mel Brooks, Neil Simon, and Woody Allen. Reiner teamed up with Brooks and together they released several iconic comedy albums beginning with the 2000 year old with Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks. Reiner was best known as the creator, producer, writer, and actor on the Dick Van Dyke Show. Reiner formed the comedy duo with Mel Brooks in The 2000 Year Old Man and acted in such films as It's a Man, 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 Mad World, 1963, The Russians Are Coming, The Russians Are Coming, 1966, and The Ocean's Film Series. He co-wrote and directed some of Steve Martin's first and most successful films, including The Jerk, 1979, and also directed such comedies of Where's Papa, 1970, Oh God, 1977, and All of Me, 1984. Regis Philbin was American television presenter, talk show host, game show host, and actor and singer. Called the hardest working man in show business, he holds a Guinness World Record for most hours in U.S. television. Um, he got his first national television exposure as Joy Bishop's sidekick on The Joy Bishop Show. He is most widely known as the co-host of the New York City-based nationally syndicated talk show Live with Reaches and Kathy Lee starting in 1988, which became Live with Reaches and Kelly in 2001 and continued as Live with Kelly after De Philbin's departure in 2011. Philbin debuted and hosted the U.S. version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Million Dollar Password, in the first season of America's Got Talent. Alex Trebek hosted a number of, of game shows, including The Wizard of Odds, Double Dare, High Rollers, Battle Star, Classic Concentration, and To Tell the Truth, before becoming the host of the syndicated game show Jeopardy for 37 seasons from its revival in 1984 until its death in 2020. We also lost some great stars from the early days of television. Robert Conrad um, was best known for his role in, as the sophisticated Secret Service agent James T. West on the show Wild Wild West. Ed Burns was an American actor known for his starring role in the television series 77 Sunset Strip. He was also featured in the 1977 uh, 1978 film Grease as a television teen dance show host Vince Fontaine. It was a charting recording artist with Kooky Kooky Lemme Your Cone. Roy Horn was one half of Siegfried and Roy. From February 1st, 1990 until Horn's career ending injury on his birthday, October 3rd, 2003, Siegfried and Roy formed, uh, were regarded as one of the most visited shows in Las Vegas, Nevada. From 2004 to 2005, Fischbacher and Horn were the executive producers of the animated sitcom Father of the Pride. Naya Rivera was an American actress, singer, and model. She was best known for playing the lesbian cheerleader Santana Lopez on the Fox television series Glee. For the role, she received critical acclaim at various awards, including a SAG Award and the Alma Award, as well as earning two Grammy Awards and one Brit Award nominations. Rivera drowned at Lake Puro near Santa Clarita, California while swimming with her four-year-old son Josie was found alone on their rented boat. Wilford Brimley was an American actor and singer uh, who starred in such movies as The China Syndrome 1979, The Thing 1982, Tender Mercies 1983, The Natural 1984, and Cocoon 1985. 
He was a longtime face of television advertisements for the Quaker Oats Company. He also promoted diabetes education and appeared in, in related commercials for Liberty Medical. <coughs> Conchetta Ferro was an American actress, although she was a regular cast member of five television si si uh, sitcom series. She was best known for playing Berta the Housekeeper for all 12 seasons of Two and a Half Men. For her performance as Berta, she received two Primetime Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series, 2005 to 2007. Uh, those came in addition to an earlier nomination for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series for her performance in L.A. Law. We lost a few music giants this year in 2020. Eddie Van Halen was the American musician and songwriter and who formed the American rock band Van Halen, which he co-founded with his brother, drummer Alex Van Halen, and bassist Michael Anthony and singer David Lee Roth. He is regarded as one of the all-time greatest guitar players in rock history. He was known for popularizing the tapping guitar solo technique, allowing rapid arpeggios to be played with two hands on the fretboard. Neil Peart was the Canadian musician, drummer, songwriter, and primary lyricist of the rock band Rush. Peart earned numerous awards for his musical performances, including an induction into the modern drummer Reader Poll Hall of Fame in 1983, making him the youngest person ever so honored. Known to the fans by the nickname The Professor, his drumming was renowned for his technical proficiency and his live performances for their exacting nature and stamina. Bill Withers was the American singer-songwriter musician who had several major hits, including Ain't No Sunshine, 1971, Grandma's Hand, 1971, Use Me, 1972, Lean On Me, 1972, Lovely Day, 1977, and Just the Two of Us, 1981. Little Richard was an influential figure in popular music and culture for seven decades, nicknamed the innovator, the originator, and the architect of rock and roll. Richard's most celebrated work dates from the 1950s, with his charismatic showmanship and dynamic music characterized by frantic piano playing, pounding backbeat, and raspy shouted vocals, laid the foundation for rock and roll. Richard's innovative emotive vocalizations and up-tempo rhythmic music also played a key role in the formation of other popular music genres, including soul and funk. He influenced numerous singers and musicians across musical genres, from rock to hip-hop. His music helped shape rhythm and blues for generations. We, t we also lost two, or uh, rather three, musical giants because of COVID. Ellis Marcells was an American jazz pianist and educator, active since the late 1940s. Marcells came to greater attention in the 1980s and 90s as the patriarch of the musical Marcellus family, when his sons Branford and Winton became popular musicians. Adam Schlesinger was the American songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and record producer. He was the founding member of the band's Fountain of Wayne, Ivy, and Tinted Windows, and was a key songwriting contributor and producer for the Brooklyn-based synthesizer duo Fever High. John Prime was an American country folk singer-songwriter. He was active as a composer, recording artist, live performer, an occasional actor from the early 1970s until his death this year from COVID-19. It was known for an often humorous style of original music that has elements of protest and social commentary. Kenny Rogers was the singer, songwriter, musician, actor, record producer, and entrepreneur. Rogers was particularly popular with country audiences, but also charted more than 120 hit singles across various genres and topped the country and pop. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, December 30th, 2020. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Rain Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the answer report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and they'll take you to the page. Everyone, Happy New Year. I will see you in 2021. Good night, and God bless you all.